In this video, I'll be explaining what all the different letters and numbers on an air conditioner contactor mean. A lot of people get confused about the ratings on the contactor, so today I'm going to try to go over pretty much every single little thing on this label. Let's start on the left side and work our way down from top to bottom. So the first thing we see is Vexunga, which is just a brand name, and like many other contactors, it is made in China. And regardless of what brand contactor you have, the label is going to look very similar to the one you're seeing here. If we look at the right side of the label, we see that this is a one pole contactor. Residential units are always going to have either a one pole or a two pole contactor. These two types of contactors are essentially the same thing. The only difference is that one of them has one set of contacts, whereas the other one has two. Most central air conditioners are powered by 240 volts, which come into the unit through two hot wires. The job of the contactor is to simply interrupt the power going to the air conditioner. So a two pole contactor will interrupt both hot legs, whereas a one pole contactor will only interrupt one of them. Let's go back to our label and take a look at all the different numbers on this chart. The first thing we have here is VAC, which stands for Voltage Alternating Current, and the numbers below it are 240 slash 277, then we have 480 and 600. All this column is telling us is that this contactor is designed to be able to handle anywhere from 240 volts all the way up to 600 volts. Most residential air conditioners operate anywhere between 240 and 277 volts, whereas commercial units are going to be 480 volts, and industrial units that have big motors, those go up all the way to 600 volts. So this contactor is designed to work in both residential and commercial units. In the next column, we have FLA, which stands for Full Load Amps, and sometimes this is written as AFL, which stands for Amps Full Load. Both of these are exactly the same, but usually it'll be listed as FLA. This rating indicates the maximum current, or amps, that a motor can draw while it's running. On this label, we have 30, which means that the maximum current that this contactor can safely handle when the unit that it's connected to is operating at its full rated capacity is 30 amps and no higher. Whenever you're replacing a contactor, you always want to make sure that the new contactor has either the same full load amps or higher. You don't want to go lower. But if you want to double check, you could also look at your air conditioner condenser unit. The label on it is going to have a max circuit breaker rating. Basically, your contactor's FLA should be the same as that number or higher. Next up, we have LRA, which stands for Locked Rotor Amps. Once in a while, it'll be labeled as ALR or ALF. Both of those abbreviations also mean the same thing as Locked Rotor Amps. This rating refers to the maximum current that a contactor can withstand when the motor is starting up. Whenever the motor starts, for the first quarter of a second, the amp draw spikes up really high and then it drops down and evens out. Starting a motor is a lot like pushing a car. When the car is standing in one place, it takes a lot of energy to start pushing it, but after it's already rolling, it does not take as much energy to continue to roll it. So for example, with an air conditioner, when the unit is starting up, the amp track can spike all the way up to 120 amps for the first quarter of a second or half a second, and then it'll quickly drop the amps all the way below 30 FLA. These LRA ratings are telling us that this contactor can handle up to 180 startup amps. And for those of you that have a curious mind and you have to know why the LRA drops as the voltage increases, it might take a minute to wrap your mind around it. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you a picture on the screen. If you want to study that a little bit, go ahead and pause the video because I will be moving on. The next column is RES, which stands for resistance or more specifically resistive load amps. This rating is mostly for electric furnaces that have heating elements which are controlled by a contactor, and unlike motors, the amp draw of an element does not really fluctuate, it's pretty steady. Heating elements do not have LRA, locked rotor amps. So a resistance rating of 40 just means that this contactor is able to handle up to 40 amps of steady current. Anything over that may overload the contactor. And underneath our chart, we see HERM Refrig Comp. This stands for Hermetically Sealed Refrigeration Compressor. This tells us that this contactor is designed for heating and air conditioning applications. 
Below that, we have torque specifications. If you're somebody that always uses a torque wrench, it shows you right here what the torque should be for the screws and the lugs on the contactor. On the right side of the label, we see coil 24 VAC. This tells us that the coil that is controlling the contacts is 24 volts. It's important to note that all the ratings on the left side of the label only pertain to the contacts portion of the contactor, not the coil. The 24 volt coil is on a separate circuit. It's on a low voltage circuit, whereas the rest of the contactor is high voltage. And if we look at the bottom of the contactor, we see the 24 volts right here as well. That means that the low voltage wires that hook up to the contactor coils are plugged into here. By the way, there are contactors out there that have a 120 volt coil instead. So make sure you don't accidentally get one of those. Next up, we have the frequency rating. North America runs on 60 Hertz, whereas most of the rest of the world runs on 50 Hertz. All this rating is telling us is that this contactor can be used in both 50 or 60 Hertz applications. Next up is the part number. This is the piece that gets the most people confused. When they're trying to order a new contactor, they think that the new contactor has to have the same part number as the old one. But that is not the case. Usually the part number on a contactor is only used as an identifier. You wouldn't use it to order a new part. Air conditioner contactors are pretty standard. So when you're ordering a new one, the only two things you really need to focus on are FLA, that needs to be within range, and also the voltage. If you want some more information on this, I would suggest watching my video where I show how to replace a contactor on a residential air conditioner. I explain a lot of other things there. And the last thing that I did not cover on this label yet is this thing right in the middle. I believe it says CRJUS. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure what this means, but it's most likely a certification or an approval mark that indicates that this contactor meets the specific standards or requirements for use in the United States. But if you know more details on this or any of the other stuff covered in this video, please let us know in the comments below. But before you go to the comments section, let me tell you something interesting. My grandfather has the heart of a lion and a lifetime ban from the zoo.